Hello and welcome. This is Christian Compass Ministries with Pastor Larry Jones, and here again we are just awfully grateful to have you share in our worship experience and to have you know how important it is, not only that you're there, but that we have an opportunity to share, even in spite of all that is going on. We praise God for you, and in this special holiday weekend, we just, we just thank God to be alive and and to be able to celebrate his goodness in our lives in spite of what's going on all around us. And so I just welcome you to our, our Holy Communion service as well on this first weekend in the month of July, 2020. We thank God for you. Would you join me now in a word of prayer? Holy God, infinite God, awesome God, all surpassing God. Hmm omnipotent, omnipresent God. You are great and glorious. You are righteous and holy. You are our God. And so we come today to celebrate. We come to celebrate not just this opportunity we have, but to celebrate you in our lives, to celebrate your presence, to celebrate all that you do for us, what you give us, what you offer us, to celebrate the fact that you gave your only son to die for us. We come to praise you today. We come to lift our voices in adoration and exaltation in celebration. God, we are just awfully grateful to just have this moment, this, this time. We, we are here solely because of you and, and for no other reason. And, and so we just thank you because you have looked beyond us. You have looked beyond our faults and our failures. And, and you have rewarded us. You, you have guided us and you provided for us. You healed us. You covered us. You protected us. And in spite of all the trouble that's around us, you continue to be our, our protector. You continue to be our God. And so we just thank you today. We praise you today. We bless you and honor you. And we ask that you would just come now and, and share in this experience that you would present yourself before us and that those who are listening might feel you in a new way, that those who are listening might know you in a new way, that those who are listening, God, might have a new awakening, a, a new experience with you and so that we celebrate you and no other. Bless now those who are sick among us. We pray for their healing. We pray for those who are going through this virus and those who are who are in hospitals. Oh God, when their families are not that present, you be their company. We pray for the nurses and the doctors who wait on them. We pray for our country. In this, in this weekend that we celebrate our, our national independence, help us God to remember that had it not been for you, we would not be who we are. So bless your name today. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, your son. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. And we want to share in our scripture lesson for our message today, as well as in our devotional time, uh, in the book of 2 Samuel. In the book of 2 Samuel. I want to share with you just a few verses in the sixth chapter of 2 Samuel beginning there at the sixth verse. In the New International Version, it reads like this. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen had stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, the place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? He was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to, the, to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed him and his entire household. 
Now King David, it was told, the Lord had blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and with the sound of the trumpets. This is the word of the Lord for his people. It sounds like they were having a wonderful time celebrating the goodness of God. And that's what we're here to do today, to celebrate all that God does for us in spite of us. And so I want to wish you a happy 4th of July weekend. I pray that you stay healthy and safe, that you will do all the things that, that we're required to do as we celebrate this weekend. Perhaps this is a good time to just take some moment and reflect on God's goodness. While we can't celebrate as we do with all the things we do with our families and crowds, let's just make God the center of our focus. This is a different time and a difficult time in our country. Our leadership is in disarray, trouble on every hand, but God is still steadfast. And so we praise him for his goodness to us. And I just thank him for, for you and for your being there with us and celebrating with us. I also want to do what we do each week, and that is to thank you for your offering and your tithes. And to tell you how much we are grateful to all that you do, especially during this particular time when folks are struggling financially and struggling with their jobs and struggling in their own personal livelihood. We thank you for your commitment to the church and all that God has asked us to do. We praise God for you. We thank God for you. And we ask that you continue to be with us. And join us on Thursday morning for our morning prayer time, 6.30 on Thursday morning. We believe that God does answer prayer if we are faithful and if we believe. In a moment now, the word of the Lord on this weekend. As I look back over my life, I can see all your love is guarding me Even though I've done wrong You never left me alone But you forgave me And you kept a blessing This I recall to my mind Therefore I have hope It is because of your mercy That we are not consumed Because I could bear the spell Welcome to our worship experience here at Christian Compass Ministries. This is our 4th of July celebration weekend. It is also our time here at Christian Compass for our Holy Communion time. And today we're just glad. We're just glad for the opportunity to share. I want to share with you just a little bit of our scripture that shares some of the focus, the underpinning for our message. It is in that second Samuel and the sixth verse I want to share the 14th and 15th verses. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. When he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of the trumpet. Today I want to talk about all of us have reason to praise the Lord. All of us have a reason to praise God. Welcome again to our Holy Communion worship experience. This is the first weekend in the month of July. It's a high time of celebration for Christian Compass Ministries, our church family and our friends, and we take this time to celebrate God. As we celebrate all the other things around us, we 
celebrate God, reflect on all that he did for us through his son, Jesus Christ. In the celebration, we offer him our sacrifice of praise. You know, from time to time, we revisit this element of worship, this avenue that leads us into worship called praise. Because we realize how precious is the power of praise. And, 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 and we realize that God expects us to praise him. He, he requires that we praise him. And because of what praise does in our ongoing confrontation with the adversary, I want to share with you, as I mentioned, our text and our thought for today that all of us have reason to praise God. The ancient Greek philosopher Socrates developed for his students and his followers what has come to be known as the Socratic method. The Socratic method. It's, it's, a, it's a theory of identifying truth by asking and answering questions. And perhaps the fundamental truth that he left for his followers is just this, that you and I must know ourselves. We must know who we are. Yes, we know facts, and we, we, we may know some subjects. We, we may know about the holy wars, and we, we may know about Greek philosophy, and we may even know about Einstein's theory of relativity. But in the process of learning, it is critical that you and I know who we are. Socrates says that you haven't understood the greater truths until you understand yourself, what you believe, what you're all about, what it is that stimulates you, what makes you tick, what makes you see the glass half full when others see it half empty, what causes you to wake up in the morning with a smile on your face and a song in your heart while others go to bed depressed and wake up the same way. And what is it that gives you inner, this inner something where you speak life when other folks only see death? You have to know who you are. Know yourself and then be true to yourself. Don't be afraid to be who you are. Don't, don't give too much credence to what other people think or what they say about you. Don't be consumed by what is happening on the outside. Understand what is going on on the inside. Because that's what dictates who you really are. To many people look good on the outside. They, they have all the trappings of the good life, but they're empty on the inside. So know yourself. Know who you are. And don't, don't try to live up to what others' expectations are for you. God made you and intended you to be yourself. Others may not like you. They, they may not want to hang out with you. They may even talk against you but you will be able to sleep at night and wake up refreshed in the morning if you know who you are. And that's the key for, uh, uh, for our message today, the underpinning for our thought today. The King David, you, you remember David. David is our key figure in this, in this pericope. He, he is our leading character. He is the quintessential leader of Israel. He, he has succeeded now in, in, in bringing the... 12 tribes of Israel back together. He, he has brought them under the banner of Yahweh. He, he, he has calmed their fears. He, he, he has brought them contentment. He has boosted their confidence. David was an unequal, awesome, powerful king. Oftentimes, people know you because of your profession, or because you're some celebrity, because they've seen you on the news. They, they, they may have seen your name in the paper, but they don't really know much about who you are personally. They, they don't know where you came from, and they certainly don't know what you are or what you were before God touched you and put you in the place you are now. They, 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 they know you, but they don't know of you. They don't know the trouble you've seen. They, they don't know the places you've been. David is dressed in his kingly garb, regal and splendid, he is the high king. But there is stuff about him that people just don't know. Yes, yes, he is the king. But he's not always been the king. You, you, you remember David. That there was a time when David didn't care whose wife she was. That, that, that was a time when David was running for his life, 
hiding out in caves. And had it not been for his friend Jonathan, no one knows what might have happened to David. And so here now God has anointed him king over Israel, but he was not always the king. Here he is now the king. And the word comes to him that the Ark of the Covenant, this awesome piece of the culture of Israel, is being blessed at the home of Obed-Edom. The Ark of the Covenant represents the very presence of God. You, you, you remember, it, it had in its contents items and articles that, that, Israel, that Israel worshipped as being God. Obed-Edom is finding favor and the joy of God, God's grace and mercy. And the Bible says that everything in his household is being blessed. David learns that the entire household of Obed-Edom is being blessed. So he and his leaders agree now, it's time we go down and bring the ark back to the city of David, back to Jerusalem, so that they too might enjoy the blessings of God. They, they assembled this large entourage to go down and, and get the ark. And, and David now, having decided to go along with them, he stands there in front of the assembly, dressed as a king he is, wearing his full dress and attire, the attire of his imperial power. Can you, can you see him? Can you see him? Here is David. David is royalty, pomp, and circumstance. He looks like somebody because he is somebody. And so the gathering is ready. The assembly, the assembly is prepared. You, 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 you have to know now, this is no small matter. This is a major undertaking. Now, 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 they go down to obed -Edom. They They pick up the ark, and, and they are excited about their preparation to go back to the city of Jerusalem. And as soon as they've taken the Bible, says six steps. David says, hold it! Hold it, hold it, stop, stop. Stop the procession. The people, the, the leaders of the crowd, what's going on? What's happening? Is, is, are we being attacked? What's wrong? Why are we stopping? David said, now, before we go any further, we must make a sacrifice, mm, help me, Holy Ghost, that we must make a sacrifice to the Lord. David said, we've got to honor God. He announced to the people we have to worship God because had God not given us his grace, had he not poured his grace out on us, if he had not loved us as he does, this moment would not be ours. My friends, every now and then, we need to stop whatever we're doing and praise God. For the moments, help me, Holy Ghost, for the moments that he creates, in our lives. Now listen, listen, listen. I didn't say the moments that he gives us, for he does that too. I'm talking about the moments that he creates just for you and for me. See, you see, see, we don't often realize that, 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 that for God to do something in our lives, sometimes he has to move some things and shift some things and change some things, delete some things, rearrange some things just for you and me. It's a delicate balance. But you and I have to stop for a moment and consider all the things God has to do to align and realign so that you and I can receive his blessing. Now, now I have to admit that's way beyond our pay grade. That's way beyond anything we can think of. And because God is far ahead of us in all that he does. Every now and then, he has to close somebody's mouth and block some negative thought just so you and I can progress. Think about it. Think about it. Here you are. Here you are sitting there, worshiping with us in this time, having this awesome experience with God. But God made it possible. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. You didn't, you didn't start you on your way. God had to move some things. He had to move some distractions. And he had to even give you the idea and the willingness to be a part of worship. He had to give you the desire to hear the message. God is constantly working on our behalf. He has to shut some doors and open some doors. He has to tell the devil to leave you alone. He's moving on your behalf even while you're asleep. 
And so we worship God because of the stuff he creates just for us. We worship him and praise him because he never sleeps nor slumbers. He created, help me Holy Ghost, he created some things just to bless you, to transform you. And you and I ought to get excited you and I ought to get excited just thinking about all that God does on our behalf. David told the people, we have to stop now and, and praise God because of all that he's done on our behalf. He, here we are in, in, in possession of the ark. We have to worship God. We, we worship is not just some shouting. It's not just running around the room. Sometimes it is just reflecting Sometimes it is just reflecting on the goodness of God. Just enjoying the very presence of God. Sometimes it's just sitting and listening to the voice of God. And so at this point, at this point, the story uh, gets to be spiritually challenging. D David said, we have to worship God because of his majesty and because of his holiness. He said to the people, remember the last time we were here, when we were transporting the Ark of the Covenant, Uzzah was killed because he mishandled the Ark. If you look there at verse 6 and 7 of our text, Uzzah, and, and to us it does look a little strange, but that's because of us. But Uzzah uh, reached up and, and, and kind of steadied the Ark as he was about to tip over because the oxen had stumbled. But right there, Uzzah was killed. God, Uzzah died right there next to the ark. Now, now, killing the servant may have seemed harsh to us, may, may have seemed a little severe, but you and I have a very limited understanding of God. The Bible says his thoughts are so far superior than our thoughts. And David, you remember, David, this, this man after God's own heart, was angry because of what God had done. And so he left the ark down at Obed-Edom's house some three months ago. But then he hears that the ark has caused Obed-Edom's house to be blessed beyond any measure. Isn't it interesting? Don't you find it interesting? Here, here God has killed one person for mishandling the ark, and he's blessed another person because the ark is being housed in his place. A, a sign of death in one instance, and a sign of love and abundance in another instance. You, you see, you and I have to be spiritually mature to comprehend how blessings and curses come from the same place come from the same God. The, the, the message is clear, though. If you honor God and obey him, God will honor you. But if you disobey him, well, you understand that sowing and reaping is still in the Bible. But my brothers and my sisters, the, the, this is where the message gets exciting for me. and It fills me up. The, the, this is why the, the praise of God is so fundamental. We praise him because he didn't have to bless us, but he does. He, he doesn't have to give us a second chance, but he does. He, he doesn't have to look beyond our faults and our failures and reward us according to our needs, but he does. God continues to work on our behalf until we get our little act together. What an awesome God we serve. And so, so I, can't, I can't speak for you. I don't know your circumstance, but I praise God because when I deserve judgment, God showed me his grace and his mercy. I praise him because every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. I praise him because I can't find nobody who can do for me what God does for me. When I was wrong, he kept me. When I acted a fool, he blessed me. When I couldn't see my way, God put me on a path called straight. And I can't thank him enough. I can't praise him enough. Well, he is everything to me. So here, here's David now. Here's David, the king of Israel. 
he, he knows how powerful this moment is. And he, and he knows that he, being the king, there are certain expectations of him, certain, a certain demeanor that he has to carry, a, 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 a certain way he has to act and talk. You know, the king speaks a certain way. He acts a certain way. He doesn't hang out with unsavory people. That, that's why Socrates said it's important that we know who we are. Because knowing who we are helps us to make the right decisions. So David told the people, we now have the ark, and we are ready to return to the city of Jerusalem. Obviously, there is excitement and jubilation. David said, but I can't, I can't return dressed like I am. I'm the king, but I'm more than the king. I'm more than just that. And before we can travel uh, uh, any distance at all, the Bible says that David took off his professional attire. Help me, Holy Ghost. Took off his, his, his kingly robe and put on a linen ephod. Now, 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 now the, the, the linen ephod was the attire of the priesthood, those who were servants. David put on this linen ephod as a servant, and he went out before the people. And I'm, I'm certain that some of them thought something had gone wrong with David, that perhaps he, he had fallen off the deep end a little bit. He, he, he was, yes, he was their king, but he was also God's servant. And so David reminded the people that I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to remind myself of the goodness of God. And because David had a reason to praise God, you and I ought to have a reason to praise him. No, no matter how high David said, I, I look in your eyes as the king, I'm not all that in God's eyes. And I'm only who I am because of the way he blessed me. What we need to do is start praising the one. We, we like to look up to the people who can only do but so much for us. David said, we need to praise the one who can do everything for us. He said, I, 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 I have to be true to who I am. I can walk with kings and dignitaries, but, but I'm a great worshiper. I'm not just a leader of the nation, but I'm the chief praiser of God. So, so I got to praise him. Praise him because he has been just that good. In verse 14, the Bible says that he told the musicians to strike up the music. Help me, Holy Ghost. But right there, David began to dance to the Lord. He and the people of Israel began to shout for joy. They, 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 the Bible says they, 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 they praised him with all their might, with sounds of music and the trumpet. They, they, they had a celebration unto the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, I wish that I could paint the picture just to show you what was going on with David and the people of Israel. David said, I don't care what people think. I don't really care what they say. Because when I realize how good God has been to me, what he's done and what he continues to do on my behalf, I've just got to praise him for he is the God of my salvation. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be at the modest station. You, you can be in the grocery store. You can be cooking dinner. You just got to stop and praise God for who he is. Every now and then, I have to find myself where David found himself. You and I have to find ourselves so overwhelmed by the goodness of God and all they can do is praise him. David took off his clothes, help me, Holy Ghost, so that he could be ready and fit <laughs> to give God praise. Because see, nobody can praise him for you. You, 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 you have to praise him for yourself. No, nobody, nobody knows what you've been through. No, nobody knows what you're going through right now. Nobody knows the hell you've been through. Nobody knows how God has brought you through. He doesn't, you don't know. Nobody knows the healing that he's put in your body or the hope that he gives you, the deliverance that you share, the joy that he gives you. So, so there, there are come a time when you just can't help yourself. But praise God for the trouble he brought you through. Praise him for the narrow escape that you witnessed. Somebody said he picked me up when I was down and put me on a solid rock when I... Couldn't see my way clear. God stepped in just on time. The Bible says that David and the Israelites praised God. When the ark was brought back to the city of David, back to Jerusalem, all they could do was praise God. There has to be a time when you and I 
I'm not afraid and not ashamed to give God praise. We, we can walk back down members' lane and reflect on all God has done for us. How he opened some doors and closed some doors. How he placed us in some places you and I could never imagine. How he's allowed you to see some things you would never ever see. Sometimes you just lose control when you think about how great God has been. Your praise may not be coordinated. Your dance may not be in rhythm. But you've got to stop and give him praise. David had a reason to praise God. All Israel had a reason to praise him. You and I ought to have a reason to praise the Lord. I know there's got to be somebody out there listening who, who, who has a shout just for God, who has a praise, who proclaim his goodness. There ought to be somebody who has a reason to thank God for his all-surpassing goodness. The world, see, wants us to be quiet and, and, and sophisticated. The world wants us to be reserved. But, but, but you and I know how good God has been. So I'm going to give him all I have. I'm going to give him every bit of energy, all of my strength, because he's been just that good. David said, I've got to shout and praise him, for he's been everything to me. I know I, know I got to end this, but, I, but, but, but here we are. Here we are in the middle of a global health crisis, out of control. People are afraid and unsure, uncertain. Folks are getting sick by the dozens. Many are being admitted to hospitals that are already full. Hospitals running out of beds. And some patients are dying. And we don't know what to do to stop this deadly virus. We turn to our government, and they are in disarray and confused. There is conflict and discord. Then we turn to the medical community and health professionals. And, and, and yeah, we call them heroes, but they only know but so much. And we still haven't found a way to stop the spread of this disease. And people are still getting sick by the thousands. Ha <laughs> ha, but you and I, you and I know who's in control. You and I know who, 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 has the, who has the solution to our troubles. And you and I know that God is the answer. He is the one who can turn all of this around. And let's not wait until we discover a cure. Let's not wait until the clouds are lifted. Let's not wait until the rain stops falling. Let's just shout. Let's just shout and praise his name right now. Praise him because there's nothing impossible for our God. Let's not wait until the morning breaks. Come on and praise him in the nighttime. Praise him because of his all-surpassing greatness. Praise him because of his goodness. Praise him because he is our way out of no way. We ought to praise him. Praise him for his goodness, for his grace and mercy. You and I ought to have a reason to praise the Lord. So, so on this weekend, let's celebrate the God who is God and praise him because the victory is on the way. And in the name of Jesus, we praise him for the victory is ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the celebration of Holy Communion and, and thank God because as Jesus said, we do it in remembrance of him and for all that he has done. Our communion has been consecrated and so we share in the partaking of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And it says that in the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Won't you let us eat together? 
After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this is the new covenant in my blood that was shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. And we drink together. Let us join together now in the Lord's Prayer as we conclude our worship experience for this day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the power. Mm. Thine is the power and the glory mm. forever and ever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God care for you. Until next time.